how many of you thought we'd never get to the last moment of the week, huh? It's been a long week, but a great week, exciting. Um, I really hope I get through this night without just, you know, breaking down and bawling in front of you and everything. I, uh, uh, I feel pretty emotional to be up here with you because uh, as I think about God's hand upon my life uh, for the last 50 years, it's unbelievable. Uh, how many of you have ever, ever thought of your life as a, a book with many chapters? Okay. And boy, for many of us, that book would be a bestseller if we could ever get it written, right? I mean, some of y'all got some funky stuff in there, you know? <laughs> we all got some uh, things that if we were really to put it out there, maybe wouldn't be proud of. And, but as Christians and as followers of Christ, we all know that there is a redemptive story in our book. And, uh, if, and tonight, here's what I want to do tonight. Um, the, the title of my message, I, I, I'm going to give it this title, The Next Chapter of CCDA. L uh, leadership for the Next Chapter of CCDA, okay? Leadership for the Next Chapter of CCDA. What, what, what's that going to look like? What will it take for us to become and continue to be the organization, the association, the movement, the group of people that God wants us to be, diverse, incredibly talented, passionate, committed, what will it take? And, um, and as I think about that, probably my chapter, the first chapter for me would begin, and you all have your own chapter, because you're part of this book. It, it starts with the very first time I heard John Perkins when I was a youth worker back in San Jose, California. Struggling, yeah, San Jose, you know, uh, struggling with uh, not feeling very good about how I was doing, reaching families and young people in the hood, feeling like there had to be a better approach than just to focus on one particular uh, part of ministry. Uh, and hearing John and lights going off and thinking, man, that is the way that I know that we need to work if we're going to really transform lives and communities. And then the other chapter happened about 20 years ago when I came to that meeting in 89 when John was inviting all his best friends. How many of you, John, looked in, you in the eye and said, hey, you know, I want you to come, and you felt like he, you were the only person in the world that he was inviting to that meeting, right? And if he called you buddy, you know he didn't know your name. But, uh, man, John invited me to this meeting, and I came to Lawndale in 1989, and I got off the L uh, stop there at Central Park, and I went, and that weekend changed my life. A year later, and this might be the third chapter, uh, my wife Mary Ann, my daughter Anna wasn't born yet. She's the only one of our three kids that's a, Ch a Chicago kid, okay? But our two boys, we moved from California to uh, Chicago, and I'll never forget, we went we came to Chicago to visit Coach and in December of 89 because we were praying about making this move and coming and everything, and it was so cold. It was so freezing. There was so much snow. We would drive around La Villita, and because uh, when I was there in October, there was actually people out that lived there, but it was so cold in December that I didn't see anybody alive. It was so cold. And yet, during that time, I'll never forget, we met for about three or four hours with Coach, and, uh, and I, I was so excited to tell him all the dreams and visions, and man, that we want to come to Chicago. And then he said to us, uh, you know what, if you come, we'll help you, but I want to tell you that if you're not committed to giving 15 years of your life to do this, I don't think it's a good idea that you come. Wow. That was cold. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was cold in a lot of ways, right? But I tell you, that, that, that allowed me to really understand the, 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 the severity, the importance of what uh, the decision that we were making. Is this just kind of a fun thing that we wanted to be on a journey or adventure, or is this really the call of God? And we ended up coming. And that's the next chapter might be the, the first years of coming and establishing in partnership with Lawndale, La Villita Community Church. Anybody here from La Villita? A couple of you? There's a few. All right. Yeah, well. 
Thank you. And I wish I could tell you that, uh, you know, uh, I mean, those first five years of starting the church, man, it was amazing. It was exciting. It was dynamic. It was unbelievable. I was involved in CCDA. I came on the board. That chapter was so exciting. Well, the next chapter, the, the second five years that I was pastoring there was a little tougher. And uh, I, I like to say it like this. The members of my church at La Vita, they figured out that I did not have the gift of pastoring a little bit sooner than I figured it out myself, all right? And thankfully, I was able to make an exit out of that role, still very committed to Christian community development, to serving the Lord. I still live in La Vita 20 years later, but God was stirring other things in my heart, and I knew that the gift mix that I had was a little different. And, uh, and, but I was at a point where I was saying, Lord, can I be useful for you? How many of you have ever felt that way? Man, you, you're committed, you know God's called you, but you're still trying to find your place, right? That's where I was. And, uh, and then um, last chapter, uh, maybe uh, be, uh, next chapter would be kind of coming on staff to start the institute and coming on, uh, you know, to work with CCDA. And then just uh, a little bit ago, probably almost four years ago, uh, uh, is this last chapter that leads into today where I was asked to become the CEO of this amazing association. And, and I want you to think about this. I mean, only God could orchestrate something like this. There is an an association founded by one of the most dynamic, respected, important civil rights leaders of our time, founded mostly to help us engage in a Christian way in the struggle between the black and white community, and this little Mexican guy born just barely on this side of the border First language was Spanish, had to work hard to lose my accent because I got my butt kicked a lot. That in his mercy, in his sovereignty, somehow God chose me to step into the role to help bring leadership to an association like this. See, that is a book that's like, wow, I don't know that we could write it on our own, right? The Lord's hand, I believe, has clearly uh, been on me uh, through this time. Well, tonight I just want to talk to you out of uh, Scripture. I want to look at one of my favorite passages of, of Scripture. It's, a, it's a, a leadership text out of the book of Acts, Acts chapter 20. It's probably one of my favorite verses uh, uh, that has taught me more about leadership. I've reflected on this. I've been teaching about this uh, verse and uh, this chapter for many, many years. And tonight, I want to go old school, okay? Uh, I was really tempted to come out here and to bring my iPad, you know, and to just kind of be holding it up here and looking all like uh, Steve Jobs. I tried, black shirt, jeans, right? But uh, we're going to go old school today, okay? And uh, I want to read this text. I'm not going to read it all the way through. I'm going to read it just a little bit at a time, beginning in verse 13 of chapter 20. Of Acts, okay? Now, if you just look at this verse, the context of which it is taking place, the Apostle Paul is uh, just spent about a, a year or so traveling, teaching. He had been in, uh, in uh, Ephesus for about three years, and he'd been building into leaders there. He'd been investing his time there. I don't think he started the church of Ephesus. But he invested a lot in these leaders, and he was preaching the gospel, he was forming disciples, he was teaching them, and if you read the book of Ephesus, you'll get all these amazing themes that Paul taught as he spent three years there, but then he leaves and he continues traveling around, and now it's time where Paul is getting ready to go back, and he is feeling the urgency to, to go to Jerusalem because he wants to be there for the Passover feast, 
and he's ready to go. He's got a plan, okay? He's got a plan. He, 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 Paul's a man with a mission. He's got passion. He's got vision, and he has a plan, and he says, man, I got to get over there to Ephesus as soon as I can, and if you read the chapter before, they just had an amazing revival week. You know, he preached all night uh, just before that, and uh, this young man had uh, been listening to, to him preach. Paul was a little long-winded that night, and the guy just falls dead out the window. Paul has to raise him up from the dead. You know, that must have shook him up a little bit. Praise the Lord that he did raise him from the dead that night. Some of us have put some people to sleep uh, when we preached, right? I hope I don't do that tonight. But, but here's what happens. And I, this is just a little deal, but to me, I love this. I love this. It, right before we get to verse 13, uh, uh, or, or, or it says, no, in verse 13, it says, Paul went by land to Asos, where he had arranged for us to join him. Now, Luke is writing, right? While we traveled by ship. Now, from where he was to Asos, where he took off, Paul had just, like I told you, he just had a really intense ministry time. It says, he decided, look, you all go on by ship. You know what I think he was thinking? I need some time alone. I need some time just to be with the Lord. Everybody, you know, is telling me how great I am. I just raised this kid from the dead. I'm just doing all this good stuff. I can imagine, like... Dr. Perkins reminds us so often, he, he knew how much of a sinner he was. He knew how prideful he could be. I bet he just said, man, I just need to get grounded. I need to walk. I, you know how far he walked? 20 miles. We walked about a mile and a half this morning, and we thought we did pretty good. Paul walks 20 miles, and he meets his crew in Asos to take off on this journey to Jerusalem. And... Uh, I love that because I, I wonder what was going on in the heart of Paul. I cannot imagine that he wasn't communing with God, that he, was, he wasn't praying, he wasn't talking to the Lord, he wasn't just saying, God, I, I know some tough times are coming ahead, I know that this is difficult, I, I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it is, but I, I, wanna, I wanna be faithful. I can just hear Paul talking that way. But it says, the next day uh, we sailed past the island of Chios, and the following day we crossed over to the island of Samos, and a day later we arrived at Miletus. So they're on this journey. Verse 16, Paul had decided to sail on past Ephesus, for he didn't want to spend any more time in the province of Asia. He was hurrying to get to Jerusalem, if possible, in time for the festival of Pe uh, Pentecost. But we, when we landed in Miletus... He sent a message to the elders of the church at Ephesus asking them to come and meet him, okay? So here's an interesting point about this little text. Uh, do you know that it is the only place in the book of Acts where we see a recorded sermon that Paul preaches to a group of leaders, okay? Paul is this evangelist, he's an apologist, he's always out there trying to break new ground, uh, he's always out there evangelizing, he's trying to bring people into the kingdom, but in this passage, you know what he's doing? He is teaching the leaders, he's gathering the leaders, and I think this is appropriate for us here in CCDA, because this message, uh, leadership for the next chapter of CCDA, I think there's something here that we need to hear. Okay, so the first thing we see in this passage, Paul stops in this little port, and he was planning to go, he was planning to go to get to Jerusalem, he was planning to just go on, but he said, you know what, I'm so close, I'm, you know, 30 miles away are these men and women and leaders that I've invested three years of my life in, I'm pouring into them. I'm so close to them, even though I have a plan, I'm gonna change my plans and I'm gonna invite these leaders to come and be with me. See, I think sometimes as leaders, our plans need to be interrupted by our love for people, okay? How many of you have ever run over people because your plans are so grandiose? See, that was my problem, that was my problem. In my early years of leadership, I tell you, I, I was so intent to out Lawndale Lawndale. 
I wanted to out Gordy Gordy. I wanted to out coach coach. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to be the Latino model of CCD. But I tell you something, I, I think I took my eyes off the most important thing, developing the people. Investing in the people, loving in the people, just being there with the people. What I see in this passage, Paul, his intentionality. Man, oh, I'm so close. Bring them down here, call for them, and they came. Now, you know, that's a good test of leadership, right? You call your staff to come, and they come, right? You call your volunteers to come, and they show up, right? They don't have to come. This is one of those non-required staff meetings, and they end up coming. I think that's, that's amazing. Paul is intentional. Paul, in this passage, he's putting his people ahead of plans. He's got this, you know, deal. Hey, I'm going to go. I'm gonna, I got this journey. I got to do this. But they're there, and it says that, uh, you know, he says, go get them. Now, when they arrived, verse 18, listen to what it says. When they arrived, he declared, you know... Well, let me go back one second. See that word up there? Community. Community. I think that's key for the leadership that we need to provide. We, we need to be about fellowship. We need to be about the familia. We need to be about the community. There's a word in here, you know, that's really important. Remember when he says that they sailed on? It says together. Together they sailed on. And, and he went and met them. Friends, if we're going to do the next chapter of CCDA right, we got to be together. That's why coming to the conference once a year, you know what? I, I know you can do without a conference. I know it's hard. I know there's a lot of expense. I know it's difficult. But we cannot do without together. We can't do without community. We can't. The, the fact that you can come together and find other like-minded people that believe what you believe. Isn't that amazing? I mean, there is not a price tag you can pay for that. Community, the community of a group of people that are on the same page, not about everything. We're not uniformly united on everything. We still got room for dialogue and disagreement, but there is community. I think that's at the core of what Paul is talking about here. He's building a community of people, okay? Verse 18, it says, when they arrived, he, uh, he declared to them, you know that from the day that I set foot in the province of Asia until now, I have done the Lord's work humbly with many tears. I have endured the trials that came to me from the plot of the Jews. And then listen to this. I love this. I never shrank back from telling you what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes. I've had one message for Jews and Gentiles alike, the necessity of repenting from sin and turning to God and having faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the second thing that I think we're going to need if we're going to really lead effectively, the kind of leadership we will need to, uh, in CCDA to make it to the next chapter, I'm going to call character, you know, uh, I'm so glad that we have a leader in John and in Coach that they absolutely believe that we need to be holy. We need to be men and women of God. We need to be filled with integrity. I love it. Paul says, with humility. We need to be humble. Now listen, you know what I think humility is? Humility is accepting the gifts that God is giving us and then being willing to use those in the team, in the community, to his glory. Humility isn't saying, oh, man, I'm nobody, I'm no good, I'm, you know, there's nothing I can do. No, that's, that's, that's uh, you know, that might be humiliation. That's not what we're talking about. But Paul says, you know what, I came to you humbly. I came to you with tears. I endured trials. And I love it. He says, man, I, I did not shrink back from telling you the truth. Don't you love it when Dr. Perkins just blasts us and let us have it? I mean, when he tells us the truth, he lets us know, man, uh, who we need to be, how we need to act, what the gospel is all about. Man, I want to be, I, I, I be a person of character because of the leadership of CCDA. We are Christian. 
We're Christian Community Development Association. We're not going to neglect that. I believe that that is at the, at the core of who we are. And Paul lays that out so clearly. Man, I never shrank back. And you know, the private room up in your house or, or, or in private or public, doesn't matter. I'm not going to tell you one thing in secret and then say something else in public. We're going to put it out there. And sometimes it might be messy, and sometimes it might feel like, man, these guys don't have it all together. These, you know, this, this men, these women, these men. You know, we're not perfect. We got to be humble. We got to say to you, and you know what? There is a, a, a great uh, comfort that comes from the fact that we are an association. You know how many board members we have? We have about 30 board members. We got about 40 advisory board members. And all of these strong people, they lend their voice, they give their input, and none of us can just stand up here and make a decision and say, I'm the only one that knows the right way. We depend on each other, we're submitted to one another, and with humility we come even before you and say, man, you know what, we tried to do right this week. We tried to lay out this immigration thing in a good way, but maybe we didn't do it perfectly, right? Humility, integrity, honesty. I think that uh, uh, if we can stay true to being people of character, I think we're going to become who God calls us to be. Now, the next little passage that we read here, it says uh, in verse 22, And now I am bound by the Spirit to go to Jerusalem. I don't know what awaits me except that the Holy Spirit tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it to finish the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus Christ. The work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Now, one of the things that I love about CCDA is that we've got conviction. We've got conviction, you know. We, we know what God has called us to do. We're, we're committed to saying, man, we are going to do it right. We're going to preach the gospel. We, we, we know what it, what it means to be made right with God, not by our own works, but by faith. We're a people of conviction. We believe in Christ. We believe in the cross. We believe in salvation by grace. We believe that out of gratitude we give back to God uh, our service because he's been so good to us. We're not wishy-washy about our faith. Some of us might lean a little bit more this way and some of us might lean a little bit more this way. Some of us raise our hands and some of us don't. You know what? That's not important. What's important is that we are willing to stand up and say, I am a faithful believer in Jesus Christ. We're here to serve Christ. We're here to honor Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let me ask you something. Our conviction, is our conviction that we would just go out there and have the most successful ministries and organizations around the country so that we can be plastered on the, all kinds of magazines and books and everything like that? I don't think so. You know what our conviction is? That we might be people of God. That we might follow Christ. That, uh, uh, that one day he would look at us and say, my good and faithful servant. That's it. That's it. You know what? Some of us have been laboring for so long. We've been laboring for so long. And we don't see the fruit that we started out thinking that we were going to have. You know, you're wondering, now, now why isn't it working yet? Now, if you're only in year two or three or four, you know, it's because it's going to take another 20 or 30 years, all right? But there's some of us, we've been at it for a long time, and we're still saying, God. but the conviction that God has called you, that you're doing exactly what God called you to do, God called you to the poor, God called you to serve him, that conviction is clear, and you know that there's nothing that's going to change that, Right? And, uh, and he says, you know what, uh, and I know, look at verse 25, and now I know that none of you who, uh, to whom I have preached the, uh, the kingdom of God will ever see me again. You know, one of the things that I love about CCDA is uh, our focus on the kingdom, our, our focus on the, on the kingdom. We have, I believe, great clarity about the message of CCDA. 
We, are, we have great clarity about who God has called us to minister to. We're not here to, call, to minister to everybody, but we're called to minister to the poor. We're called to under-resourced communities. We're called to go to the kind of places where nobody else wants to go. We're called to say, man, you know what, instead of saying, let's build a church where there's a good off-ramp and freeway, access to parking and all of that, and where there's more people coming, great demographics, we say, you know what, where is the greatest need? Where are those neighborhoods that are suffering, that are hurting, that are marginalized, that have been left alone? And I tell you, I love that clarity. And as we said today, you know, one of the things that uh, is clear about CCDA is that we have a strong theology. We got a strong theology. We know what we believe. How many of you have been to a cafe this year? Anybody gone to a cafe? A couple of you? Would you yell or something so I could hear you? All right. All right. Yeah. You know, all over the country I've been going this year and I've been, I've been preaching this one message, okay, that, that uh, trying to talk about the, uh, with clarity the theology of CCDA. And I've said, you know what? Uh, we're about the kingdom. And the kingdom message is more than just a single kind of faceted message. And the message starts with this idea of incarnation that we've been talking about all week. God moved into the neighborhood. And just like God moved into the neighborhood to demonstrate his love to us and to redeem us, that that's not just a theological proposition, but it is a model for us to follow ourselves. And that without proximity and relationship, we really cannot see people's lives changed. We cannot transform a person. We cannot transform a community without incarnation. And then I've talked about, you know, if you read the Bible, proclamation and formation is all over the Bible. You can't be a Christian and not proclaim the good news. We're about proclamation. We're about preaching the good news. We're about telling people what God is doing in our neighborhood, in our lives. We got to be about proclamation. And I don't see anywhere in the Bible where God says, just preach the gospel. We also got to make disciples, right? And then we ought to be about the demonstration of compassion. We got to be about showing people, demonstrating people the, the love of God. And we do that so well. But we know that just putting band-aids on needs is not enough. That eventually we have to move to restoration and development. We've got to move to really bringing solutions that will restore lives and transform communities. And then finally... And this is something that we've been dealing with all week. We've got to confront injustice wherever we see it. Because sometimes uh, in, in our work, you know, we realize that uh, there are forces that don't want our neighborhoods transformed. And so we, trans, uh, we confront the systems of injustice wherever we see them. See, there's clarity about our message. There's clarity about the fact that the Bible tells us to love and to do, to preach. He tells us, you know what? There's power to transform lives, yes. And there's power to transform communities. See, it's not an either-or proposition. It's a both-and, right? And then uh, as we go on in this passage, it says, uh, it says in verse 26, I declare today that I've been faithful. And if anyone suffers eternal death, it's not my fault. I didn't declare, I didn't shrink back from declaring all that God wants you to know. So guard yourself and God's people. Feed the, uh, sh uh, and shepherd God's flock, his church, purchased with his own blood, over which the Holy Spirit has appointed you as elders. I know that false teachers like vicious wolves will come in among you after I leave, not sparing the flock. Even some men from our own group will rise up and distort the truth in order to draw a following. Watch out. Remember the three years I was with you, my constant watch and care over you, day and night, and with many tears. And now I entrust you to God and the message of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance with all he has set apart for you. You know, another element that I think is so important, the kind of leadership that we got to have, and I believe we have this in CCDA, is commitment. You know, commitment to do the work to develop the people, to protect, to guard, to raise up those leaders. Now, I just want to say one thing right now that it, it's, it's really important for our movement today. We have about 25 young people here 
in the National Student Leadership Intensive. Would you just kind of yell a little bit if you're in here? Are they here? They're gone. <laughs> They're out somewhere else. All right, well, that's probably better so I can tell you, you know, I could be a little more honest. Here, here's what's going on. I'll tell you what, we've invested a bunch of time and money and effort to provide a conference within a conference for high school kids from your ministries. And I know this year it was the worst time in the world, right after Labor Day, to bring high school kids, right? Terrible time. So this year we're going to give a pass. But here's what we need to think about. Boy, um, we can't keep doing this if only 25 students come. But we keep talking about, man, we got to invest in the young leaders. We got to invest in the next generation. Yeah, we're doing it with these 40 year olds and the 35 year olds and the 20 year olds. But how about these high school students? Uh, a couple people have come up to me and said, you know what, Noel? Don't pull the plug on this program. Don't pull the plug on this because we need it. It's so crucial. And this is what they said I'm committing to step up and give leadership to this deal. I'm committed to doing that. And so I'm asking you, there are many of you in this room that have high school students like Kit and others that, you know what? Uh, you could be the key to transforming the youth movement of CCDA. Really, it could be one of you in here. So I'm gonna challenge you tonight that maybe God is calling you to come and to say, man, uh, this is what uh, God has called me to do to come in here and to help give leadership to that. But you know what? I believe we're committed. I believe we're committed to do whatever it takes. We're committed to serving you. I mean, you got a great board. You got a great staff. You got a great uh, uh, association. And we can step up and, and be the people, not only to transform you know, our young leaders here, but to go back into our churches, into our, our communities, and to begin doing the work the CCD way. I believe we can do that. I believe that you will make that kind of commitment to do that. And then, listen to this as we draw to a close here, starting in verse 32. And now, uh, verse 33. Uh, I've never coveted anyone's silver or gold or fine clothes. You know that these hands of mine have worked to supply my own needs and even the needs of those who are with me. And I've been a constant example to you of how you can help those in need by working hard. You should remember the words of the Lord Jesus. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had finished speaking, now listen to this last part of this verse. I believe this is one of the most powerful little pictures in all of Scripture. When he had finished speaking, he knelt down and he prayed with them. And they all cried as they embraced and kissed him goodbye. They were sad, most of all, because he had said that, that they would never see him again. And then they escorted him down to his ship for him to take off. And in some versions, you know what it says? They reluctantly escorted him down to the ship. And they were broken up. And the last point I want to make that I believe is so important for the kind of leadership that we want to provide is I want to call continuity. Continuity. And here's what I'm saying. Friends, I think that the task that God has given me and, and our board is to help CCDA move well beyond John Perkins, who is the most amazing man. Can you imagine doing CCDA without John? We can't. Can you imagine those Ephesian leaders and those folks gathered around Paul crying with him and saying, man, Paul, you know what? We love you so much. You're such a giant, spiritual giant. There's nobody like you. How will we continue without you? We can't. I mean, we just can't do it. We're, we're going to be done. You know what Paul says? Hey, I'm telling you, you can do it. You can do it. This thing, you know, God has used me. I, I've been important. I've been a piece. But there is a plan for continuation, and it's going to go on. We know that God has called us as an association to, com to commit ourselves to keep working in poor neighborhoods all over the country and all over the world. Can you imagine how many communities are out there that need Christians to be mobilized into their communities to do the kind of work that we're doing right now? 
So here's what I want to do as we close our time today. Uh, I want to uh, ask John to come on up here. I want to ask John to come up here. Here, here. Come on up here, John. And I want, yeah, I want Gordy to come up here. If you're a board member, I want you to come up here. If you are an emerging leader, I want you to come up here. I, I, basically, everybody in the stand, I want you to come right up here. All right? Listen, I want you to come on up. And I, I want you to get this visual. Here's the good news about this passage in Acts chapter 20. These Ephesian elders and this group of leaders, as they prayed for Paul with tears, they thought they would never see him again, okay? He ended up going off to jail, and he kept doing ministry, and he was released. And most probably, he came back to Ephesus, uh, to Ephesus to spend time with these leaders, so they did see him again. But they didn't know. They didn't know. Come on up here. Uh, come on up here, John, Gordy. Come on up here, guys, as many as we can. And I believe that as we're here together, you know, we, we look at John's life. We look at Coach's life. We look at some of the board members' lives, and we say, man, what an amazing legacy. What an amazing group of people that helped start this. But you know what? It's got to continue. It's got to continue. It's got to be, you know, I mean, we're going to shed tears, you know. I mean, we don't know if we're going to be back here next year. When I was running on the lake this week, man, I had a couple of heart palpitations, and I'm thinking, man, this is it. I'm just going to go down right here in glory. I'm going to, you know, fall into the lake, and it's over. Let's see who the next CEO is going to be. We don't know. No, tomorrow's not promised to us, right? But we are here around John, around Coach, and we're saying, man, we love you. We are so thankful to God for your leadership. We know that God has used you to do amazing things. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. That's what those leaders were saying to Paul. We would not be here. You've been the instrument of God to help us do what we do. Now, there are many of you out there that could say the same thing. I want you to come on up here. If God has used these folks, just come up around here. Don't come up to the stage now. But I want you to come. We're going to do an altar call tonight to end our time. And we're going to pray. If God has touched you through CCDA, through the ministry of John's books or whatever, come on up. Come on up. If this week God has called you, he says, man, I have felt something in my heart. I know that God is calling me to give my life to the poor. I know that it's time to remain in that community, to return to the community, to just relocate into that community. I know that I got to be a Christian that's a reconciler. I know God's doing something. You know what? I know that many of you have felt that this week and you are ready to respond. You're willing to say, man, God, I'm ready. I want to be part of this community. I want to be that person of character. I'm, I'm ready to commit. I'm ready to just, uh, you know, uh, take all of the things we're learning with such clarity. Put them into practice, right? We want to do it. And right now, we want to thank God for the vehicle, the men and women that God has used to help us get here. But we're not, we're not saying, listen, it's all over now. This is it. Because there's a next chapter. There's a next chapter, and you all are the authors of the next chapter of CCDA. Amen? All right, so uh, if, uh, if these guys can kneel, if they can kneel, Extend out your hand. Let's pray. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we love you. Oh, we're so grateful to you that like the Apostle Paul, uh, John Perkins and Vera Mae Perkins have been those trailblazers. Oh, they've just gone. They've been everywhere. They've experienced tribulations and trials and beatings and imprisonments. They've been hungry. They've been thirsty. They've been uh, tired. God, they've had to endure a lot. They've had to endure trials. They've had to move from city to city. God, you've done all of this so that they could be faithful to help us to learn, to help us to be equipped, to help us to be prepared for this moment where we would say, we got next. 
We're ready to go. We know that God has used you. We know that God has anointed you. We know that God has placed you here. But we are ready to take that baton and go the next mile. We're ready to write that next chapter in the history of CCDA. Lord, we thank you for Coach. We thank you for the 20 years that he has been president of CCDA. We thank you for his life. We thank you for Lawndale, the model that it is, the, the example that they are to us right now. We thank you for his passion, his commitment to CCDA. Oh, for Ann and the kids, God, we are so grateful. Thank you that uh, we are filled with joy and just with uh, so much gratitude in our hearts for the way that you have used them in our lives. Oh, Lord, we don't know if we're going to see any of us tomorrow. We don't know if any of us will be here tomorrow. But, God, we commit ourselves to be the association, the group, the people, the ministry, the fellowship, the community that you want us to be. Lord, there are cities all over this world that need men and women mobilized to go and be your agents of love and hope and reconciliation. Oh, Lord Jesus, we just cry out to you right now. We cry out to you right now that you would help us, God, to be faithful to write that next chapter. Lord, I believe that you have great things in store for CCDA, not because of us, but because of your greatness, because of your faithfulness. Oh, Lord, we love you, we thank you, and all of God's children, with gratitude in our hearts, we say to you, amen, amen. and amen. amen. God bless you. Amen. Right where you are. If they can get up. If, <laughs> right where you are, we're going to sing a song of worship to the Lord, and we're going to just thank God for this week. So right where you are, come, Marianne, come on up here. And I just thank God for my wife, Mary Ann, that's been with me for all these years, 20 years. And uh, yeah. So let's sing, let's sing a song to the Lord. Let's worship the Lord right now. Show mercy and walk calmly with our God. Yeah.